This is, uh, this is another drawing of, of um, this is a construction drawing of the Cushing. It's hard to see, but the, the important element of this drawing is the fact that the hard thing in these boats was, was, to, was to fit in the, the, the boiler and the engines. And you can see this boat has, uh, I mean, has, a, has, a, has a crown to the, uh, the deck, and that was all designed to fit the boiler and engines in it. And if you can, this is a view here of the boiler and the engine, and if you get close, you can just see they just fit into it. The boat, when you look at the original design drawing that submitted to the Navy, this boat originally had square boilers, as in um, stiletto. For some reason, they decided the square boiler didn't work, and, and, and the Harrisoff requested approval to change the boiler. And, eight, and in April of eight, 1889, about a year after they got the contract, they obtained drawings from Thornycroft, and they put in a Thornycroft boiler. Now the, hair, the, 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 the um, coil boiler and the, um, and the square boilers were very difficult to control at high, at, at um, the larger they got. They became more difficult to control. control. Difficult to control to prevent excessive superheat or excessive temperature, which would burn the machinery or, uh, or moisture carryover. And it was probably one of those conditions that convinced Harris off that he should go to, the, Thorny, to um, uh, the Thornycroft design. Having gone to the Thornycroft design, he then applied that to his, his private vessels also, and Vamoose actually had a Thornycroft boiler just exactly as put in Cushing. Uh, Cushing had a quadruple expansion engine that was a five-cylinder quadruple expansion engine shown on the left, and uh, also you see a two-bundle of a Thornycroft boiler. This, is a this, this, this photograph is from the uh, Portsmouth Dockyard in England. It's not necessarily the, the uh, boiler that was in, um, in, um, in Cushing, but very close to it. That's two bundle with a with steam drum at the top and what are called mud drums on the bottom, and uh, uh, generating tubes in between. The, uh, in the gaps where, where you don't see tubes is where the, uh, the burners would be in the, f in, in the furnace uh, to heat the water. The uh, one thing we don't normally mention, but Harrisoff also designed his own propellers. This is a view of the, of the uh, Cushing and Dry Dock, and uh, you know, we've never really taken a close look at it, but he designed his own propellers and had a, a full series of propeller designs. Now, torpedo boat number one, as I said, was a Harrisoff design, and that was followed by, uh, in about 1890, 1891, by torpedo boat number two. And the, uh, the Navy went out a request for proposal, and they wanted the boat like Cushing, but built for 24 knots. They got a number of proposals, including two from Harrisoff. And the bureaus decided that none of the proposals were satisfactory. And what they did then was design, create, develop their own plans and specifications, and went out for new procurement, requiring the boat to be built to the bureau plans of specifications. The Harrisoffs refused to bid. And the boat was awarded to, to the Iron Works, Iowa Iron Works in Dubuque. And, 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 and this is at, you know, at the mid-river, mid-rivers of the U.S. And uh, this is another point where you see in, in the end report is this quote, it is a matter, of sax, a matter of satisfaction to be able to spread construction to interior waters of the U.S. And that was the Bureau saying, look, Congress, I'm doing exactly what you want me to do. Now, this boat named Erickson was not successful. She was not ordered in 1891. She was not delivered. She failed her first, uh, she failed her first trial. She was not delivered until October 1896 and had problems in service. That was followed by an order, uh, uh, Cong congressional authorization for three torpedo boats, 1894. Same as torpedo boat number two, except now they cranked up the speed a half a knot. And uh, the Harrisoffs, these again were built to Navy specs. The Harrisoff did not bid on these, and they were built by the Columbia Iron Works in Baltimore. So, l viewing that situation, the Harrisoffs decided something needed to change. The next opportunity to change was when 
They came out with plans and specifications for three torpedo boats in 1896. These, they authorized these boats to be built to the plans and specs of the Bureau. It was a 182-ton ship vessel to go 26 knots. J.B. Harrisoff went down to see Secretary of the Navy. He told Secretary of the Navy, if you permit us to build our own design, we will guarantee you we will build two boats. They will do 27 and a half knots. The Secretary of the Navy accepted their proposal. And as an exception to the direction from Congress, these two boats were built to the Harrisoff design and specifications. <coughs> Now, the, the upshot of this, the Harrisoff boats were produced, and they, they produ delivered 28 and a half knots. One boat was built to the Navy plans and specs. Uh, it, it did 27 knots. So that gives you, a, a, so Harrisoff did what they said they were going to do and more. But even more was the way, contentious was the way this was done. The Harris, there were two confidential letters sent out. One went to the Harrisoffs. This, these letters came from the office of the Secretary of Navy, but they're not signed by the Secretary of Navy. First letter is signed by George Converse. And he says to Herzog, you can ignore all the instructions and plans and specifications that were provided to you. you know, we want you to build your design. And the this is an exception to our normal practice. And the Secretary of Navy is doing this because of his confidence in you because of the great performance of Cushing, and he knows you'll do for the Navy the same good job you did for Cushing. Now, Converse at that time is the local inspector here, but he signed that letter to Harrisoff. Now there's another letter that goes to Converse from the Office of Secretary of Navy, and it says to him, he says, all correspondence concerning the torpedo boats are to be addressed to the secretary. Do not write to the bureaus or the steel board about details which require their attention. You are in charge, and you can make your own recommendations to him. If he, want, if he the Secretary of Navy, wants the advice of the bureaus, he'll ask for them. <laughs> this letter also went on to say, as you can imagine, George, you're not going to have many friends here in Washington. <laughs> so that was how the, the Port of DuPont was built. So they were built, they achieved 28 half knots, and the boats came under the U.S. Navy specs by about 18 tons. Uh, these boats, uh, they, they were triple expansion engines, but there was a triple expansion engine where they reduced length. They were four, uh, four cylinder, and uh, two of the cylinders were above the others, so you made a, a more compact uh, engine that had lower vibration. That's one of the ways they get the weight down, they got the length down of the vessel. The, uh, it also had a, this, this boat here had an, an adaptation of not a Thornycraft boiler, but a Norman boiler, which is a French design. And uh, at this time, both Nat Harrisoff and George Converse were getting letters from naval attaches in Europe who were telling them, explaining to them what the latest technology in Europe was, and so they were applying the latest boiler designs. Now, in while those boats were being built in early 19, uh, 1896, Congress started talking, uh, there were bills in Congress to build 10 torpedo boats, three to five of which would be first class torpedo boats of 26 knots again. JB, based upon his, what, what he did for Porter and, and, and DuPont, went down to see the Secretary of Navy again, and he proposed we will build for you and guarantee two or more 30-knot torpedo boats. And he said, because, and that's basically is not quite a quote, because we're anxious to have our Navy in possession of the fastest vessels of this type in the world, and we'll do it under any guarantee the department sees fit to make. And included in that were some offers to even try to share some of the costs some way, because they were having, because Congress was setting a, uh, a total dollar value for the boats to be built and a maximum limit for each boat. Secretary Nery worked with, us, with Congress to try to get Congress to, uh, 
to, to provide a bill that this proposal could fit under. I'm not sure if that didn't work but, or how that finally worked out, but re what really happened was the Navy came out with a new specification for a 30 knot torpedo boat. And in this case, they were smart enough to know they didn't have the capability to design a 30 knot torpedo boat. So they went out and to industry and said, here's a proposal, to, we want a proposal to build two to three 30 knot torpedo boats. Herzog's bid, and they lost out on price to Beth Ironworks. Beth Ironworks got the contract to build two boats, and, uh, and there's another yard that got the contract to build one boat. Uh, I don't think the Herzog's bid on the one boat. And uh, what the, uh, the, the, the writings you see here are, are kind of Nat Herzog's notes on his design for this 30 knot torpedo boat. It was going to be the longest boat the Herzog's would have built, it would be 196 feet long. And uh, uh, so, and, uh, and of course, they had the basis for designing a 30 knot torpedo boat because they were model testing at speeds up to the equivalent of 31 knots. Okay, so meanwhile, so the Herzogs, they go back and they're completing the Porter and DuPont. And now comes the Bureau's time to get their pound of flesh. So, as I said, there's, a, there's an insert, Board, Board of Inspection and Survey, and they conduct the trials of, of Porter in February 1897. And in the summary of their report is, Porter's a remarkable product of the highest skill in hull and engine design and construction. They recommend that the Secretary of Navy accept the vessel. The Bureau of Construction Repair, about two months, three months after the delivery, writes a long endorsement on that report saying that in-serve conclusions are wrong. The boat was significantly out of trim. There were many plan departures from the plans and specs. Tests were not completed before the trials. She was not tested in a seaway. 